Hello everyone, this is Tiepan and welcome to Hanging Pawns. This is a game played between the great Vasily Ivanchuk and Ting Jilei, a young Chinese GM, which is she is rated about 25-40 feet at the moment. Uh, the game was played at the Trade was Gibraltar tournament in January this year, 2018, and Ivan Ivanchuk had the white pieces and he opened with 1e4. Uh, Lei plays e6, the French defense, we have d4, d5, the main moves, and here Ivanchuk plays knight to d2, the Tarash variation of the French. And in this position black has three main moves. Uh, the most common by far is knight to f6, which results in a closed position with the bad French white square bishop for black. And one of the most common variations is after knight f6, white would play e5, knight f to d7, bishop to d3, c5 and c3, and so on. And black is planning to break either with b4 or, or, uh, or a4, and f6 on the other side of the of the board and she is trying to destroy white central structure the 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 strong structure of c3 d4 and d5 pawns uh, and after d2 the second most common variation is to take with d takes e4 after which white would uh, recapture with knight takes e4 and black would most commonly play knight to f6 trading a pair of knights and the position results in a somewhat boring position which resembles an exchange french and is completely unlike the closed classical french positions. Uh, Lei went for the third most common option and the most dynamic one, she played c5. A dynamic move which immediately challenges white central control and prepares to open up lines for the bishops instead of having the white squared bishop stuck on c8 for the next 10 moves, like in most French variations. And white has to open up the center eventually with this pawn tension, and two most common moves here are e takes d5 or knight to f3. Even to create went for knight g to f3. And here the only move which is considered equal for black is knight to f6. But Lei played the rarely played line which isn't as good and which gives Ivanchuk half a point advant advantage immediately here at, at move 4. Uh, she played c, to d uh, c takes d4 and Ivanchuk immediately gave back the favor by playing an inaccuracy himself. The only correct move for white here is e takes d5. And after queen takes d5 to play bishop c4, developing and gaining the initiative. Instead, Ivanchuk played the much worse knight takes d4, which gave, gave Lei equality once more. And she played knight f6 six here, we, take, we have e takes d5, queen takes d5, and knight to f3, knight 2 to f3. Here she developed with bishop to e7. Perhaps better was instead to play knight to c6, challenging the strong central knight. But bishop to e7 is not bad. Ivanchuk played bishop to d3, developing the bishop to the most active square. And here Lei went aggressive and she played a very dynamic move, which is very double-edged as well. She played d5, an energetical double-edged move, but not that good since white will have much more active pieces in the center and it's becoming a lot riskier than it was before for black. Uh, Ivanchuk replied with knight to b5. And he's not threatening knight to c7 check here, winning the rook, because Lei could simply play queen to a5 check after that and winning the, the c7 knight, forking the, the king and knight. In this position she castled instead, and Ivanchu castled as well. And here she played another very aggressive move, she played e4. A weird move which seems very bad at first glance, and it's seemingly threatening to win a piece, but uh, Ivanchu has a great resource in this position, he plays knight to c3, and now it's clear that White is going to win the e4 pawn and that the, the pawn push was, was double-edged because it's gaining a tempo on the queen and winning the, the e4 pawn because it's now attacked three times. And this seems just simply lose a pawn, but Lei must have calculated well in advance because she is able to re regain the pawn shortly. Uh, and she plays queen to c6, even to gaze, gains another tempo on the queen with knight to d4. Lei plays queen to b6. And here he captures with the bishop, of course, uh, because otherwise the knight on d4 would be hanging if it took with the c3 knight. Your bishop takes e4, rook to d8, pinning the knight to the queen, and bishop to e3, defending the knight once more because it was now attacked twice. Here she does regain the pawn with queen takes b2. And in the process of gaining the pawn back, she managed to resolve the central tension in a favorable way for her, and she stands only a bit worse here after a position which was seemingly much better for Ivanchuk, or at least becoming much better for Ivanchuk. 
Uh, here he played queen to d3, the only move in this position actually, because it's unable to, it's uh, not possible to unpin the queen. Any move such as queen to e1, which still defends the knight on c3 and uh, removes the queen from the pin, would lose immediately to bishop to b4, pinning the knight to the, to the queen and winning it. Uh, Lay developed her knight to a6, knight to a6. We have rook a to b1, by Ivanchuk gaining a tempo on the queen. The queen retreats to a3. And bishop to f3, not giving away his bishop pair and saving the bishop because it was attacked by the knight on f6. Uh, here she plays a knight to b4, gaining a tempo on the queen. Queen goes to c4, and bishop to d7, finally developing the bad French defense bishop. Here Ivanchuk uh, attacks the, the queen on a3, which is weirdly placed, with knight c to b5. The queen goes to a5, and bishop to f4. Now... now Getting the bishop on the most active diagonal and now the, the white bishops are actually looking very scary and here he is perhaps even threatening bishop to c7 immediately forking the queen and the rook. LA replies with bishop takes b5, you have b, uh, knight takes b5, uh, knight b to d5 and bishop to g3 once again saving the bishop pair. And this position is equal if you dusk an engine and the material is equal. Uh, but the bishop pair is so strong and it's controlling so many key, key squares and the entire queen side that it's much easier to play for Ivanchuk. The, the bishops are con controlling both b8 and c8, which are the key squares for, for the black rooks to develop to. Here Lay uh, plays uh, rook a to c8, developing the rook on an unattacked square, gaining a tempo on the queen. Uh, queen retreats to b3 and a6, gaining a tempo on the knight. And slowly but surely removing all the all the pieces from the attack for white but it's it's double edged too because she's weakening her position and she isn't doing much to create any threats of her own here even she plays the only active move with the knight and the only move that doesn't threaten the knight immediately because knight to d4 would be uh, very weak because it's pinned to the rook he plays knight to a7 and in this position if she tried to gain a tempo on the knight, or win the knight, because it would actually win if it worked, with rook a8, it would fail because Ivanchuk would be able to play queen takes b7. Gaining the pawn and the move such as rook d to b8 is impossible because it's uh, b8 is guarded by the g3 bishop. Here she played rook to c3, attacking the queen, offering a trade of the b pawn for the c2 pawn, and Ivanchuk takes, he plays queen to b7, and if in this position uh, she played rook to c2 immediately, if she immediately captured the c2 pawn, even she would have knight to c6 forking the king and queen, king and uh, queen and rook, I'm sorry, with the winning position. So instead she played queen to c5, which is uh, a slower move, but it ensures that she doesn't blunder any material. After queen to c5, even she played a4, a move which I find really hard to understand because there's not too much point uh, f to play that move. It's restraining her her queen side and preventing a5, a4 advance for black and getting the pawn one square closer to queening. But I think that there must have been something more useful than that. And she replies with a slow move and the loss of tempo as well. She plays h6. It's definitely a loss of tempo and she should have played rook to d7 instead, chasing the queen away. And after queen to a8 check, just retreat back and go on for a draw if Ivanchuk wants it. And this way with h6, she, she just made her position much worse. Uh, here Ivanchuk took the pawn on a6 and she captured on c2. And now Ivanchuk is a clear pawn up. There is no more way for her to regain the lost pawn. Uh, Ivanchuk plays knight to b5. We have knight to b4 attacking the queen. Queen retreats to b7. Rook to d7, now finally going for that tempo. Queen to b8 check, rook to d8, queen to c7 offering a trade of queens. And here she played the losing move, rook to c8. White has a superior position anyway, and then it trades, especially that of the queens, would benefit even too greatly, and rook to c8 just allows simply queen takes c5, training the queens. And bishop to c5, knight to d6, this, this position is just winning for white. She plays rook to f8, saving the rook. Rook f to c1, offering another trade, which is impossible to avoid because the bishop would be hanging, otherwise it's pinned to the rook. Rook takes c1, rook takes c1. Bishop to d6, retreating. h3, 
getting some luft, avoiding any tactical issues. Rook to d8, and in this position, after she played the move, she actually resigned. It's definitely not a win Ivanchuk earned himself, or at least all by himself. His play wasn't perfect, but and Lei gave him too many weaknesses to exploit and even, even opened the game with a theoretical mistake, which Ivanchuk could have capitalized on earlier. This line in the Taras French is definitely good to know for any E4 player, because you will meet the French often, and all French defense players out there should avoid mistakes such as C takes D4 on move 4 in this variation, because it's always easier to just know the theory and play the most common most common lines. And Ting GLA must have known that it was an inferior move, but perhaps she was trying to surprise Ivanchuk with it. It's always smarter to play the best moves if you know them and let your opponent risk with, with novelties if you can do that. Alright everyone, I hope you got something from this Tarash French. Thank you for watching, see you later, goodbye, have a nice evening.